Manhattan's mountain-like towers and skyscraper bridges, an architectural solution to solve the city's congestion problems. A project by Raymond Hood, one of New York's leading skyscraper architects of the 20th century. In this video, we will be extracting Rem Koolhaas' thoughts on this project from his book, Delirious New York. Let us first introduce the project and the architect behind it. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and let's start. Part 1, Manhattan 1950. Raymond Hood, the architect behind the McGraw Hill, American Radiator, Daily News Buildings, and the guiding actor for the Rockefeller Center. At the start of 1924, Hood published a series of proposals to rationalize a concept that he called the City Towers. His idea was to create massive, self-sufficient structures to hold full communities and to spread these buildings like mountains all over the city. The project also included a plan to build a 10,000 foot long bridge that was also a skyscraper. The bridge included two residential towers, 50 to 60 floors tall, acting as the anchoring pillars of the bridge. It is a new urban plan for the city of New York, a plan to build on top of its grid without disrupting it. Part two, the architect. Raymond Hood, an MIT graduate and self-acclaimed greatest architect in New York, started his professional career in 1923 by winning the prize to design the Chicago Tribune Tower. For his first building in New York, Hood diverged from the standard solution of designing towers at the time. He shrank the building footprint and was able to create openings on its western facade. Following the zoning regulation, that design would not have been possible if he was to exploit the full area. The rent inside the radiator tower was raised due to the increase in space quality. The building was cladded with black bricks to hide the boring pattern of the windows. At the upper levels, Hood placed gilded ornaments, a plan to self-advertise the building. Through the creation of a building with setbacks to open on all its sides and with the use of material in the sense of architectural advertising, Hood was on his first step on the journey of the City of Towers. Part 3. The City Under a Single Roof Raymond Hood published a theoretical project that was founded on the principle that concentration in a city like New York is a desirable condition. The growth of the city is getting beyond control and Hood's answer was to confine it inside certain areas. The idea was to reduce the travel distance from home to work to school and entertainment. The salvation of Manhattan was to turn it into a city of towers or the city of mountains. The second stage of this theoretical urban project to solve New York's congestion problem was to choose 38 locations on the grid of Manhattan to place these massive towers. The mountains are placed on the intersections of alternate avenues. The size of each mountain exceeds the size of the block without compromising the grid. The final stage of his plan were the introductions of the tentacles. The tentacles are suspension bridges overloaded with apartment buildings. They are streets that became buildings. Conclusion Rem Koolhaas closed his chapter by pointing out the paradox of solving congestion with congestion. That the idea of breaking the barrier of congestion we will enter a world of silence and serenity is a self-made schizophrenia. In reality, the chaos of the world in Hood's plan will be removed from the subways and absorbed by the architecture. It is a plan to remove the noise from the streets to the buildings. A solution to solve nothing. 